Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Rivers pose a significant obstacle to any advancing military force. These bodies of water offer the enemy a location where they can attack forces that have lost their momentum. Forces that are able to bridge the gap fast and effectively can maintain or regain the initiative. River crossings are crucial maneuvers that allow forces to project power over terrain impediments. For example, during the 2003 Iraq invasion, U.S. Marine Corps assault amphibious vehicles quickly traversed the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, gaining important objectives such as bridges and airfields to aid the coalition's speedy advance. Among these systems, the M60A1 Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge is the Joint Assault Bridge's older counterpart. This scissor-style bridge system mounted on an M60 tank chassis has a 60-foot span and can hold up to 70 tons. The bridge takes eight minutes to launch or retrieve with only a two-man crew allowing for fast assault crossings of gaps up to 60 feet. Since the 1970s, the M60 AVLB has served to support armored and mechanized forces maneuvering across challenging terrain. In 1996, an improved AVLB based on the M1 Abrams was introduced into service. As mentioned, the Joint Assault Bridge is the latest variant in use. The Joint Assault Bridge is a vital enabler of quick ground maneuvers, allowing armored forces to surge across gaps as wide as 84 feet, which would otherwise significantly hinder their progress. Mounted on the adaptable M1 Abrams chassis, the scissor-style bridge system is deployed in less than two minutes by a highly trained three-man crew. Once deployed, 70 tons of armor can rush across the bridge's 70-foot span, maintaining momentum with Abrams tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles while maintaining high operational tempos. The bridge-laying elements are prepared to quickly collect the span and move on to the next obstacle, continuing the process as friendly troops advance deep into hostile territory. The combined assault bridge thus lives up to its purpose, allowing audacious armored thrusts to maintain assault momentum. Of course, there are other capable bridging systems among NATO members, such as the Leguan, developed by Germany. The Leguan bridging vehicle is a scissor-style bridge, built on a Leopard 1 tank chassis operated by German armored engineers. With a crew of two, the Leguan's 54-foot bridge can be launched in less than eight minutes, allowing Leopard 2-class 70-ton main battle tanks to quickly cross wet gaps up to 76 feet wide. For example, during the NATO exercise Trident Juncture 2018, a German Leguan launched a bridge across a river, allowing Norwegian Leopard 2s to demonstrate interoperability and improve combined weapons maneuverability. Other bridging systems such as the Ribbon Bridge or Improved Ribbon Bridge require bridging boats such as the M30 Bridge Erection Boat. The M30 Bridge Erection Boat is a 30-foot-long aluminum alloy vessel with a crew of four, which delivers and launches floating bridging equipment. Powered by twin 225-horsepower motors, the 10,000-pound boat can reach 30 knots while maneuvering 6,000-pound bridge bays.
the flexible M30 can conduct assault bridging operations from inland rivers to coastal zones, utilizing its power to maneuver bridge segments accurately. With its shallow one-foot draft, the boat can go deep interior via rivers and streams, allowing for rapid bridge deployment to support the mobility demands of fast advancing armored troops. BEBs are used to erect improved ribbon bridges. Bridge erection boats usually deploy quickly from their trailers, and their trained personnel are prepared to rapidly assemble an improved ribbon bridge. As the armored assault approaches the waterline, the 30-foot BEBs spring into action. Specialized personnel are used to precisely connect lightweight aluminum and fiberglass bridge bays just inches over the water surface. Within 20 minutes, these swift boats can complete the IRB's 500-foot span installation their twin outboard motors spinning as 70-ton main battle tanks rattle across the improved ribbon bridges linked bays. The compact 12-foot wide bridge footprint increases the ability of vehicles to negotiate wide water obstacles. No U.S. military system is adopted without testing. With the improved ribbon bridge, scaled down tests were performed to gather data on its performance. This was required as the weight of the M1A 2SEP4 and later versions have significant weight increases. These tests were used to determine new parameters for utilizing the IRB under real-world conditions. Adapting its length according to the flow rate of rivers and other parameter changes deemed critical. Tests were conducted in a still water tank by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Civil Engineers. Much smaller scale models were also tested in an environment tank, where conditions such as the river flow speed could be adjusted. The test that we're doing here today is going to inform us on the safe operating conditions of the IRB when crossing with the new Abrams tank, because the Abrams is heavier now than ever before. So now we just need to make sure that our tactical float bridges like the IRB are capable of carrying it and so that we can transport you know, and move across rivers uh, and what we call wide wet gap crossings. This kind of research enables the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to erect IRBs with confidence. The modular bays of the improved ribbon bridge are joined together using an inventive rolling connecting method. Male junction boxes situated in one 12 by 14 foot bay connect with female junction boxes in the next. This permits the bays to be linked while afloat, with the linkage rolling as the bays move. Once the IRB is secured, the first vehicles to cross are Bradley Fighting Vehicles, more specifically, the M3 Reconnaissance Variant. A tactical distance behind the reconnaissance element, the armored units will cross in their 70-ton-plus M1A2 Abrams tanks. They are followed by the rest of the force. Bridging operations don't just apply to river crossings. Other innovative ways to use floating bridges are ferries or bridges to move vehicles from ships to shore. 
combine joint logistics over the shore activities show how military logistics can be smooth even without port infrastructure. CJ Lots establishes a temporary marine base using the improved Navy Lighter Ridge system, a modular warping tug, and floating causeways. During operations, INLS components are transported into position, connecting ships and land. The INLS's versatility allows for the direct movement of vehicles, equipment and supplies from vessel to shore without the need for ferry vessels or other craft. It's like building a bridge from the ship to the shore. On February 12, 2020, during the Maritime Prepositioning Force Exercise 20 off the coast of Naval Station Mayport, U.S. Marines and sailors carried out a complex operation to offload improved Navy Lighter Ridge system equipment from the U.S. Naval Ship First Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez. The INLS, a modular causeway system made up of powered and non-powered floating platforms, allows for the quick transport of heavy equipment and supplies from ship to land without the use of port facilities. To improve rapid and scalable deployment capabilities in the European theater, the teams used the INLS to build a floating pier. This innovative approach enabled the rapid and safe processing and movement of crucial military hardware right onto the beachhead. An example is the moving of the tried and tested high mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle or Humvee from the Baldomero Lopez from the cargo bay of the vessel onto a segment of the improved Navy Lighter Ridge system. In this case, cranes were used to get the vehicles from the vessel onto the INLS. Even with the use of cranes, the amount of time it takes to get a combat or logistics force onto the beach is greatly reduced. The aim, however, is to make the system a roll-on, roll-off system, where all vehicle movement is performed by driving the vehicles to shore from the cargo bay. Other methods of getting vehicles to shore include the use of the landing craft utility, with its basic function and design remaining the same from the Second World War. LCUs are available in different sizes, and are used by both the U.S. Navy and U.S. Army. M142 HIMARS is used to perform long-range artillery strikes on enemy positions, and various methods are utilized to get these systems ashore. Still, they have been used from ships in testing. An LCU loads the HIMARS and then transports it to shore. There, the loading ramp is lowered, and the system drives out onto the beach to resume operations. So we're doing joint operations with the Army for an amphibious operation. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that the HIMARS artillery uh, rocket system, what we're doing is that it fits on the naval vessels so we can conduct the amphibious operations uh, from island to island throughout the Indo-PACOM area. River crossing operations have always proven to be a major problem for militaries worldwide. With the use of innovative scissor bridge types and floating bridge systems like the improved ribbon bridge, these problems have become easier to overcome. Now, military forces have a better chance of maintaining momentum and can even drive from ships right onto the beach. In short, wet or dry gap obstacles are not the challenge they used to be. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.